Next, we're going to learn about classification strategies. The first strategy will be called subdivision a subdivision strategy. With subdivision strategies, we start with the entire group of data values and use some logic to divide observations into smaller and smaller groups according to well-defined rules. Of course, when we do this subgrouping, all groups must be mutually exclusive and the subgrouping mechanism must be exhaustive. So no observation can exist in more than one group, and at the same time, all observations have to be in at least one group. That's the exhaustive part. Uh, these classification strategies are very popular. Uh, the most popular example is probably biological classification, where we, st where we try to uh, classify all life forms into species. And here, you're very familiar with this, but we start with all life, then we have domains, kingdoms, phylums, class, order, family, genus, species. And at the end, all organisms or all life forms on this planet have a species code. Uh, some examples in geography also exist. For example, if we are trying to organize uh, regions of land around the world, we might start with, um, you know, all the, all the, uh, the pieces of land around the on Earth, split those up into the different continents, split continents up into different regions, uh, countries, split countries up into regions, regions into states, and states into counties, and we can keep subdividing counties as well into census tracts, block groups, uh, mail zip codes, etc. So we can often use subdivision strategies when we're trying to organize land uh, by location or, or by land use. Uh, another example is the soil classification strategy or the um, standard industrial classification, the SIC classification system. And we'll look at examples of that in class. Uh, here's a, a, a land use land cover classification system that I came up with where we start with uh, we start with all land on the left hand side. We split the land uh, or the, the surface that we're studying uh, into features that are natural and features that are man made. Amongst the natural parts, amongst the natural features on the Earth's surface, we can split those amongst those that are covered by water and those that are terrestrial. And terrestrial meaning on land. The things on land, well, we can say that they are either vegetation or they are bare, they're rock. And the vegetation can be forest or field. Of course, this isn't um, a very detailed classification scheme, and the land use land cover classification scheme used, for example, by the U.S. Geological Survey consists of hundreds of, uh, hundreds of, of ending type uh, or leaves of this classification tree. Um, if the land is man-made, well, we can uh, classify man-made land by whether or not it's cleared land or built land. If there's a building on the land or if there's some um, man-made structure that we can see, perhaps th that man-made structure can either be buildings or roads. And if it's buildings, then the building can have different types. They can be houses, they can be offices, they can be factories, and so on. So in this case, we are... Uh, starting, the key thing to, to see what we're doing here is we're starting on the left hand side all land and, and classif classifying the land sequentially making our classification system more and more specific as we move from left to right. And this is an example of what we call complex sorting. And it's complex because the rules that we use at each location in order to subdivide the tree can be different. So we don't use the same rules to classify all natural land, the rules being is it water or is it land-based. We don't use the same rule in that part of the tree that we use over here when we are asking if the land is built, uh, built upon or has a building on it or if it's a road. So we have complex rules and the rules can differ from place to place within our subdivision tree. Another type of 
a classification strategy is something called an agglomeration strategy. And here we are starting with individual observations and we decide to group those observations based on their similarities, based on how similar two observations are. So again, with this, we will form some kind of tree, but the process of getting there is, is not the same. And I don't have a great example for you uh, in terms of showing you how the process is done. This is typically done using uh, uh, complex algorithms. You know, there's a clustering algorithms in order to, to classify our data. But here's an example of one using voting data from the uh, 2000 election. Sorry, the 2004 presidential election. So both maps here have the same underlying data. What we are looking at are uh, uh, election districts and the percentage of the population in each election district uh, that, per that voted for Bush. The whiter the district, I mean the color of the, of the pixels on the map, the, more, the higher the percentage of people that voted for Bush. And through an agglomerative clustering uh, algorithm, the researchers were able to define seven similar regions on our map where people seem to vote in a similar way. So the first region over here, region one, is a region of, of high, high voting, high Bush percentage of voters. Region number two over here, which includes the Pacific Coast, Arizona, uh, that's a low region for Bush. Number three over here seems to be a high Bush region. Four in the Northeast, a low Bush region. And then five, six, these seem to be something in between. And seven is this island over here, which is a very low Bush voting region. So we are using in this case, in this case, an agglomerative clustering algorithm, which means that the algorithm will typically start by comparing one uh, by by looking at pairs of of regions, and for each region in the map, it'll find the closest neighboring region that has a similar value to it. And it's going to do this all over the map. So it'll start over here and find two that are same. It'll find pairs of, it's going to pair up all of the little zones with one another. Once it's done that first round of pairing, and let's just do, uh, so imagine these are zones being paired up. Once it's doing its first round, the next step is going to be to pair the pairs. So it might find, and I'll change the color here, it might find that these two belong in a region together, these two belong in a region together, that these two, these two, and maybe this one and that pair over there belong together. And it's going to keep building this up in such a way uh, that as it agglomerates these pairs together, the collection of zones are going to be very similar to one another within a, within a region and different to the values of, of, of the electoral data outside of the region.